Welcome to the Boxing Bookie. We are back. We got a good one today. We're going to get into the Pro Box card. Mike Plania and Angela Leo uh, at 122 pounds should be a good fight. We're going to break that down. But before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow uh, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, and all forms of social media. Uh, the Boxing Bookie comes at you for every single major fight, uh, showing you exactly how to bring down the house, how to make money on the sport of boxing. Um. The odds makers, the, the bookies, they don't know how to handicap the sport. I do. Um, I'm going to show you how to consistently make a second sh stream of income betting on the sport of boxing. We are absolutely killing it this year. It's a, um, 11 and 2. We're, we're absolutely dominating uh, this year. And it, it's just going to get better and better every week. All right. Please also subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That's completely dedicated to Texas Boxing. And please follow us. Subscribe to us on Patreon. You get all types of perks. You get, perks, you get a free T-shirt. Um, you get uh, the lock of the week. Uh, you get to ask me the handicap of fight, scouting report. You get a ton of perks, all for five dollars a month. That's five dollars a month. Let's get into uh, let's get into today's show. Angelo Leo is is a guy. He's twenty two and one, ten knockouts. <clears throat> I like Angelo Leo a lot. I, I think Angelo Leo, hang on, is a high caliber, top notch fighter. Former world champion, lost to Stephen Fulton, um, won, has won twice since. Um, aggressive fighter. And this is going to be a great fight. This is going to be a high-action fight. Um, Leo fights out of the tight guard. Good good combination puncher. You know, pressure fighter, always on the gas, always throws, throws everything hard, throws really hard. Uh, but he doesn't wind up, he doesn't really telegraph it. He just, you know, doesn't change up speeds a lot. He, he throws hard. He's a good, really good body puncher. He miss, mixes up his attack really well. He uses his jab to measure with it, right? He uses his jab as a measuring tool, and, and he's really, really good with it. I, I like how he uses his jab. He's got decent speed. He's not slow or flat-footed. Uh, he's a pretty decent athlete. Like I said, he's got decent pop. He doesn't seem to get a lot of knockouts and I'm not exactly sure why just 10 knockouts in his 22 wins. He seems to have a bit more. I'm not saying he's a big hitter by any means, but he doesn't like that's a knockout percentage from a, from a pressure fighter, from a volume puncher, which you think would be higher and it's not. And I, I'm trying to figure out why he's not getting more knockouts. Uh, he's quick and accurate with his heavy artillery. Like he'll throw a lot of lead hooks and stuff and, he, and he's quick and, and accurate with it. Good feet. He got good spring in the step. Like I said, pretty good athlete. He's not slow, flat footed. He can cut off the ring. He can be in your grill. He's good. And, and when he's in your grill, he's really, really accurate. He is a little bit wide open. As good as he is offensively, he's got flaws defensively, specifically on the inside in, in exchange. Yes, he is relentless. And that can work for him or against him. Right. And, and Stephen Fulton saw this and Stephen Fulton was able to expose it. No one else really has. But he's so wide open in the exchanges that he can be caught and he can be tagged. But he's constantly throwing. He's constantly throwing. Like we did a video on Dan Aziz the other day. This is a better version of, of a similar fighter to Dan Aziz. He's just, he's constantly on you. He's like a gnat just swarming you in your space. Like I said, good work rate. Doesn't have a ton of pop. But again, I, I don't think he's light hitting. I, I, I'm still trying to figure out why he can't get more knockouts. You see, he's got a really good counter right hand. Too. He's got a straight right hand that he counters with. It's, it's when he throws one at a time, and it's straight, and it's accurate, and it's quick, and, and he scores with it. He times it well. But he's, he's a good offensive fighter. You know, for the most part, his, deep, his offense is his defense. He's going to try to get you with, 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 with pressure and volume. He doesn't make you miss a lot. He's not the most difficult guy to hit. But he's also fairly athletic, which, which plays to his benefit. As for Mike Plania, Mike Plania was best known for upsetting uh, Josh Greer. When Josh Greer was a hot shot prospect, that was in the bubble during COVID. I guess it was 2020-2021. I like Mike Plania. He's got a little bit more pop. He's got a really good left hook. He loads up on it, though. Um, you, can, you can often see it coming. Uh, Josh Greer didn't, and that's what was caused of, 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 I think, both knockdowns, but definitely the first knockdown. Uh, but Mike Plenty, a better athlete, he just doesn't throw a lot. He's got a good jab, he doesn't use it. He gets a little wild, and he telegraphs his shots, like I said. His head is on the line, he's not difficult to hit. You know, this is going to be a good fight, because he's a come-forward fighter. 
Both guys like to come forward. Both guys have good lead hooks. But where, where the difference is, is Mike Plania is less disciplined and Angelo Leo is, is more skilled on the inside, right? So if Plania comes forward, he's going to be walking into a brick wall. Like Leo's going to meet him and not go backwards. And then Leo's going to outwork him and he's going to outland him and outskill him on the inside. I like Mike Plania. He's a quality fighter. If I was making a card, if I was making a boxing card, I would want Mike Plania on it. He's a fun fighter. He's not a bad fighter. He can get decent wins, but ultimately it's going to come up short. So the question becomes, does he get the stoppage? And, like, I get – I don't think Leo is feather fist. I know his knockout ratio suggests that he is, but I don't think so. What I'm going to say is plain he's got a good chin, and Leo doesn't have a history of getting knockouts. So until he reverses that history and starts getting more knockouts – I'm going to pick it to go the distance. And let, let's take a look of what that exactly looks like, how we're going to make money, how we're going to bring down the house on this. So it's two, two prongs, okay? Uh, the, the odds I thought were a little wide, but I don't necessarily disagree with it. Angelo Leo, minus 600. Uh, so we're going to do a one-times bet on that. That's going to make it 1666. I'm not comfortable enough to do a two-times bet on it. You can do a one-and-a-half on it. I think I will do a one-and-a-half on it. Um, and that's going to make us $25. And then we're going to go over eight-and-a-half. Again, until he shows me that he can get people out, I'm going to, I'm going to bet it to go the distance. And uh, betting it to go the distance is – Minus uh, 285, so a one times bet is going to make you $35. So all in all, a uh, $250 bet is going to make you $150 bet. I'm sorry, it's, it's going to make you 25, 60 bucks. No, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 60 bucks. You know, again, we're not bringing, we're not cleaning up on this, but this is fairly easy money. I think, you know, I, I think the most obvious verdict is Leo. By decision, if you just if you wanted to just you know go all in, I don't think this is a bad bet either. You could do this. I'm not doing this, but you could definitely just go Angelo Leo by decision, and it pays a uh, hundred dollar bet pays you eighty bucks. It's it's not a bad option. It's better odds for you, but it's not you're not hedging it at all. Like it's not like Mike Plenty is going to be totally outclassed in this fight, and it's not like you know. This is not a bad bet. It would be my backup bet. Just put the money in, Angelo Leo. If you wanted to put the same hundred fifty, uh, two hundred fifty in, you see what it would do. It would make you two hundred bucks. So the upside on this bet is better, and you could pick Leo by decision. There's just a little bit more risk involved. Although this is not a bad bet at all. All right, let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please follow, uh, subscribe to our Patreon. The link is in the description. Um, also. Uh, follow me all forms social media, 3 Boxing, 3 Boxing Bookie. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I'm going to show you how to bring down the house and how to beat the odds makers. We've been doing it all year. We're going to continue to do it. Please also subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That is Texas Boxing Scene. It is January 30th, 2024. From Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.